All right, good morning. It's California Adventure Time once again. I am in Tuolumne Meadows with my good buddy Aaron, and we're trying to do some climbing, but the weather's a little against us. We got some clouds, we felt a few raindrops. So we're gonna kind of have a slightly more mellow day than we wanted to. We're at Dozer Dome right now, which has a lot of really good modern two, three pitch routes, and we're gonna see how many of them we can climb. Yeah. Let's get it. I got a green green. Oh. Nice, dude. You're gonna be praying for holds that big soon. Thank you so much for tuning in to another rock climbing adventure. This one was filmed in September of 2023 and it was actually my first time in the valley since May. I had just done a lot of traveling over the summer, went to some other places, did some climbing and kind of neglected Yosemite. So it felt really, really good to be back and I was really excited. However, I knew that there was gonna be a bit of a learning curve as I adjusted to the nuances of the Tuolumne climbing. So we decided to take things a little slow to start out. So we decided to climb Eret by Bit, which is a two pitch five seven. I would highly recommend this route as sort of an intro to Tuolumne face climbing if that's what you want. It is very nicely equipped. There's no big runouts. All the bolts are good and it's just fun climbing from top to bottom. The other similar route at this crag is Ripple, which is another two pitch bolted 5.7, but I would highly recommend this route. Ripple's a lot of kind of like a couple moves to a ledge, couple more moves to a ledge, whereas this is actually sustained. You're doing a lot of delicate handed footwork, some friction moves, really got to trust everything. And that's the skill set that you want to build if you want to be a successful Tuolumne climber, which is why I would recommend this route. We had some other grandiose plans for this wall after this. I was really excited to try something hard up on that second tier on the left, probably Dumpster Evangelist. Aaron was really excited to get on Bulldozer, which is one of the purest cracks of Tuolumne. Um, overall, this is a really great cliff. However, as I was climbing, I could tell that the weather had some slightly different plans in store for us. Okay, sorry it's not the cleanest and nicest quad here, but it'll keep you alive. Okay, welcome to California Adventures. This is Aaron Zetley here as a guest. Um, we got one pitch up and now it's starting to rain. <laughs> but so, we're gonna have a great time getting down. This is good training for actual epics. Uh, cool. Alright, awesome. Um, I'm heading down. Sounds good. I'll be right behind you. I'll go fast. I'm off. Not my best present. It's coming down. We made a good choice to bail. If we can get to the car before we get too wet, I'm gonna be much happier. It's wet. We're gonna go somewhere and try to salvage the day. That's the best part of California is when it rains somewhere, it doesn't always rain everywhere. Two hours later. All right, so we drove over Tioga Pass and we are now on the east side of the Sierra and we are in Mammoth right now. We're in the Lakes Basin. Our plan B for the day is going to be Crystal Crag. As you can tell, the sun's out. It's a little nicer, a lot less wind, hardly any chance of rain. We're looking forward to having a fun little alpine climb. <laughs> Just got to the base. Aaron's about to take the lead. Should be a lot of fun. You. Pretty excited. And just like that, we were back on the wall having fun and we were able to salvage a pretty great day. Before we made it here, we did actually hang out at the Hilltop Tub a little inside of Mammoth for a little bit to wait out the storms. It was really nice just sit in the warm water. Yosemite was in a huge thunderstorm, dark clouds everywhere. And then once Mammoth started looking a little clearer, we decided to come this way. Aaron had never done Crystal Crag before. I'd done it a couple times, but it's just yeah, way it's cool. too much fun. Okay. Peter Croft describes this as a mini alpine adventure and I completely agree. The amount of like bang for your buck adventure adventure climbing that you can get here is incredible. The approach is about a mile and a half, gains just under a thousand feet. It always takes a little longer than you want it to, but you are rewarded with some beautiful alpine granite. The 5.6 version starts with a pretty chill 10, 15 foot ramp section that you just saw Aaron climb, and then immediately goes into some 5.6 moves that people consider to be some of the harder moves on the route. I don't think these moves are very challenging. Really, I think the key here is to actually think a little more three-dimensionally. If you're just climbing on the face, it will feel a little challenging, but you have have a good crack off to your left as well as another wall even further you can get some really good stems get some places that will take weight off your hands after this crack section you pull onto a ledge then the vast majority of this pitch is primarily five zero to fourth class you're kind of just romping it's undervert there's a lot of good stances and you can just kind of move have some fun run it out and then uh, build a blade pretty much wherever you want to once you've gone about half a rope length 
Next up, it was my turn to lead pitch number two, which is a pitch I really enjoy. It starts off very similar to pitch one in the sense that there's a lot of fourth class, low fifth to sort of get you going. Eventually you end up with this notch chasm thing that you need to go through. This is on the left side. It looks like there's some options to go right, but do not do that. Go into the chasm. Everything on the right is chossed city and you don't want to be there. Trust me, I've made that mistake with other partners. Getting out of the chasm, you are going to be doing some fifth class moves. I'd say R5-6 and very much in line with the moves of the lower part of pitch one that a lot of people consider to be the crux. I would just encourage a little bit of caution here. Uh, there is some friable rock. I've seen holds marked with an X and up above that ledge has a lot of gravel on it and people will knock things down. I have been guilty of knocking a few things down onto my climbing partners and I've also been on this ledge when there's been three parties and there are things raining down. So I would just advise caution. I would recommend probably setting the belay a little ways back from where you actually pull up over the lip just so if you are moving around to whatever, it's gonna minimize the chance of the gravel falling to where your climber is actually climbing. Then it was Aaron's turn to lead pitch number three, which is called the Quartz Staircase. This is one of the coolest and most unique pitches I think I've ever climbed, and this is really the reason why you climb this route. It's just straight quartz. That's it, it's beautiful, it's white, it's super bright, and it's unlike any other section of rock I have ever seen. It is not the best climbing in the world. The pitch is kind of short. There's really kind of like one brief section of fifth class that could be made easier by going to the right. Just like being surrounded by all this quartz, the crystals, the gleaming. That's really cool and that's really why people enjoy climbing this route. I do have some wonderings about if gear would actually stick into the quartz. If you're familiar with the texture of quartz, it's kind of like soapy, slippery. When you're placing the cams, it really isn't the most confidence inspiring. If anybody has any experience with placing cams on quartz, please let me know in the comment section if they held. I'm very interested. <laughs> But a beautiful day to be on some sick ass quartzite. Woo! Welcome to California, baby. For full points at the end, I would highly recommend standing on the quartz block, which is really, really cool. This is not the high point of the actual mountain, but it is just a cool place to stand. And it's a little heady kind of getting up and getting down off there, especially because it was windy when I was up there. Yeah, so it's like, you're like, huh. Like, how good is this here? After that, you are kind of starting your descent. So you're gonna keep moving in the direction that you were climbing. There's a brief, maybe 15 foot third class down climb section that you could belay somebody down if they weren't super confident. And then you keep moving in the direction that you're going for another 100-ish feet or so, um, mostly third, maybe a tiny bit of fourth class sort of ridge running. And then you'll get to some slings where you can repel. I love ridge running like this. From this point, many people yeah. choose to descend, and this is probably the most straightforward descent. Just go down, follow footprints, it's really hard to get cliffed out. You might have to do one or two third class step downs, or very soon you are on terra firma, and you can just go right around to the base of the route, grab your stuff if you left it there, and head down after doing an excellent climb. However, for full value, I would highly recommend continuing up on the ridge to the true summit. This is really where you get that true alpine feel. You're on a great ridge, the rock is solid as it gets, you have really nice exposure, and you're just romping on this ridge, man. I was grinning from ear to ear the entire time. We elected to simul climb because it is easier and a lot less vertical than the other sections of the Crystal Crag climb. There's maybe one exposed friction-y 5-4 move that sort of makes you just think twice for a second, but it's really no big deal. After that, you can tag the true summit and head down, which can be a little trickier than descending yeah, after yeah. the rappel. Unfortunately, my battery died when I was up on the ridge, so I need to call this video to a close. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit that subscribe button if you want to see more California adventure content like this, as I got plenty more on the way. And I hope to see you on another adventure.